Hi friends, today we are going to discuss about the sorbitol pathway or polyol pathway. This sorbitol pathway or polyol pathway is a process in which glucose is converted into sorbitol, then the sorbitol is converted to fructose. So sorbitol pathway mainly takes place in diabetic patients or when the glucose level, uh, blood glucose level increases. So we can say that in hyperglycemic condition. Hyper glycemic conditions it takes place in hyperglycemic condition and the enzymes which help in sorbitol pathway that is aldose reductase and sorbitol dehydrogenase dehydro Genes. So the so the aldose reductase convert that of aldehyde group of your insulin into alcohol group, and this sorbitol reductase convert the alcohol group into keto group. So let's begin. Go through the process of sorbitol pathway so before going through the main process of sorbitol pathway I want to describe few points that the enzyme so there are certain type of enzymes which have the high affinity with their of glucose and there are certain type of other enzymes which have very low affinity there of the insulin and so there of the glucose so one of the enzyme that uh, I'm going to discuss that is aldose aldose reductase aldose reductase is an enzyme which has very low very high km and as we know that such certain type of enzymes are uh, those enzymes which have km value higher it means they have that they have a very low affinity with that of substrate and if the enzyme have enzymes have very low km it's mean that they have very high affinity to their substrate so this aldose reductase has very high km it's mean that it has very low affinity very low affinity to that of glucose so when the glucose blood glucose level is normal or decrease this enzyme will not work and when the glucose level in blood circulation mainly in diabetic patients will increase the rate of the normal this become activate and this dose reductase act on the glucose and this glucose is converted into sorbitol by this enzyme so here we can see that glucose is 6 carbon compound aldehyde group OH group H group H OH CH2OH here H OH H H this is the structure of glucose and this glucose is converted into sorbitol Sorbitol again, six carbon compound. CH two OH, the same here. The same here. The same here. Here is the same. OH, H, H. Position number three OH. H but here different that the aldehyde group will convert into alcohol group 
CH2 OH and then this sorbitol is converted into fructose again 6 carbon compound C CH2OH OH H OH H H OH CH2OH and here this alcoholic group will convert into a keto group so we can say that glucose convert into sorbitol and then this sorbitol convert into fructose and the enzymes which are responsible for these conversions that are aldose aldose reductase Aldose reductase and here NAD we will convert into NAD P positive and here NAD positive is converting into NADH and here the enzyme is here the enzyme working that is sorbitol sorbitol dehydrogenase dehydro dehydrogenase so this is the steps in sorbitol pathway why it is called poly or because there are a lot of OH, 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 OH group so it is called it is also called as poly all pathway or sorbitol pathway <coughs> and here the glucose that is maximum or the higher concentration of the glucose which automatically activate the aldose reductase and this aldose reductase then this converts its substrate into product that is sorbitol and then this sorbitol is convert into fructose by sorbitol dehydrogenase and mainly this conversion that is sorbitol convert into fructose it's mainly takes place in our liver cells our uh, ovaries and seminal vesicles and they are insulin dependent uh, cells for the uptake of the glucose and there are certain type of other cells which are insulin independent for the uptake of glucose for example our lens our neuron cells they are insulin independent they cannot they do not need insulin for the uptake of uh, glucose so uh, here we can say that one of the example that is the lens that is insulin independent insulin independent So in those cells they can take insulin, they can take glucose without insulin. So here what happened in those cells, for example, this is your lens and this is your blood circulation and from the blood circulation when in, con in condition of hyperglycemia the glucose level increases, more and more glucose will take by the uh, cells then by the your lens and after reaching inside your lens the glucose is converted into sorbitol by aldose reductase so here I made aldose reductase conversion that is the product sorbitol these are the sorbitols and then sorbitol start accumulating inside that of your lens and a point which is very important regarding that of the sorbitol is that the sorbitol is very os active, active osmolarity uh, it has very active osmolarity and uh, this uh, what is a uh, high uh, active osmolarity mean active osmolarity active osmolarity is active or smaller it's mean that if a molecule of 
sorbitol here then it has the ability to attract water so it can retain water so it has very uh, high affinity to towards water and it has high ability to retain more and more water so more and more water will enter inside the cell and this water retained by the sorbitol leads to your lens to become inflated and water layer is formed over your lens and your lens become opaque and finally it will affect your vision your vision become affected and it leads to cataract cataract and if cataract is formed then it has to surgically removed or if this condition leads to further danger so it may lead to damage of your uh, lens so another uh, neuro uh, neuro uh, another pathological condition related to that of your uh, eye that is a retinopathy it is also defect your retina one of it uh, why and how it affect your retina it uh, is a uh, again our different lecture and uh, <coughs> another type of the cell that is neuron nerve cells they are also very sensitive to glucose so when the glucose level increases uh, what happens the neuron become uh, start to uh, take more glucose and they also become affected by the high level of the glucose and in such patients in diabetic patients if the neurons are destroyed by high level of glucose in that condition they will call as diabetic neuropathy that is diabetic neuropathy it is related to the destruction of your neuron cells due to rise of rise in glucose level so again uh, it affect your lens it affect your neurons it affect your kidney cells it your affect your nephrons and a lot of other cells which may affect uh, by the high level of glucose so if you are a glucose patient or diabetic patient so have to treat on time and have to take uh, certain diets and have to uh, take insulin uh, injections uh, to stop certain type of defects so thank you for watching